Good morning, everybody. We're gonna do a quick rundown of this KC Stage 1 Gen 3, as well as answering some of your questions you've had, for at least the top five questions I've received regarding this turbo. So real fast, we're gonna do a fast summary for anybody that has not seen this. This is the Generation 3 KC 300X. This is a Stage 1. We've had it on our test truck. We've got it off right now because we're doing some testing with uh, some hydro tuning as well as doing a baseline with another turbo to compare it to. We put probably about 1,500 miles on this so far. It's holding up really well, been really happy with it. But we're gonna go over the basics first. So this is a ground up redesign. First off, you'll notice the center section is massive compared to the stock. The back cover is actually cast into the center section. The bearings on this are about double the size of what you would find in GTP 38 or the stock turbocharger. The compressor cover is a 0 0.70 versus a typical GTP 38, which would be a 0 0.10. It's a lot more efficient on the inside, you know, typical billet wheel and all the good stuff that comes in a KC turbo. On the other side, the exhaust housing is also a complete redesign. Instead of being a Garrett 0 0.84 or a Garrett 0 0.10, I think they make a 1.15 as well. This is a 0 0.90. It also has this flatter top on it, and they spent a lot of time r and the center section to make it, the center section to support the bigger bearings, but also on this exhaust side to help increase the flow and helps pull up. And it does pull really fast, at least in the stage one, it's been really impressive. Um, diving into it, one of the biggest questions I've been asked is, when are they gonna be out? So I spoke to KC just a few days ago, it is, we're getting ready to get into October here. We're at the end of September, 2024. This is supposed to be out by the end of the year to the general public. Um, they're gonna try to get it out as quickly as they can, but they wanna make sure that what they've got out there is gonna be solid for the consumer. Right now, there's about 50 of these, ranging from stage one to stage three out there on everything from stock trucks to wild trucks. Some of them are racking up thousands of miles and every towing, hot shotting, sled pulling, you name it, they're running it right now. Second question, what about OBS support? Will they offer these designs or make these improvements to the OBSs? From what I've heard from KC is yes, they are working on it. It is currently an R&D, no time frame on that, but I would anticipate that the technology that they have put in this for the Super Duty will make its way to the OBS trucks. Next big question, price. Once again, this is what I've been told from KC is that it will be slightly higher than their current 300X mile model. They're gonna to try to get it as close to the pricing as I think they can, because they're not gonna to wanna to put a turbo out there that's you know as much as a 38R or to some of the ball bearing setups that are out there. But I, and I'm speaking for KC on that. I'm not affiliated with them, but I would anticipate just from a marketing standpoint that this is probably gonna be more expensive than their current 300X, but I don't think it's gonna be hugely more expensive. With that being said, it is worth the extra money. How do I like it so far? Well, it's an awesome turbo. It's the best setup I've ran on the current truck. Um, and I've ran five or six different combinations, all with similar fueling. I still have the same tune and same mods that I had whenever I was running the stock turbo. The GTP 38, I've ran GTP 38, GTP 38 with balance assembly, GTP 38R, GTP 38R with a char on a 1.00 housing, char with a 0.84 housing, and this turbo. So I do have a pretty good baseline to compare it to, and what I will say is this outperforms all of them. Been really happy with it. It spools fast, it makes more peak boost, and it's the small things that you really notice. It's that little bit more responsiveness, it's that being able to make a little bit more boost sooner, especially under load at moderate RPMs. I'm talking like 18 to 1900 RPMs. Yeah, it's not making peak boost to those numbers. What I've seen is three to four more PSI at that point, which means I have a lot more air there. I can add a little bit more fuel or I have that little bit more torque already there, which is nice. It's It just feels more torquey, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, spool up is pretty good. It's probably the best of any of the combinations. 
Um, 4R100 truck, small tire, 373 gears. I can start making some pretty decent boost, probably about three PSI if I hit a hill around 1500 RPMs. It's pretty good, but it really starts waking up around like 1650, 1700. This turbo is just ready to go. And the responsiveness, even at 2000 RPMs, if I have overdrive off and I'm at 2000 to 2300, where I would have that little bit of lag, a little delay in response from say some of the other setups, this bad boy is just ready to go. Once again, this is the smaller stage one. I want to say it's a 62 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, KC is playing some of their specs kind of close to their hearts right now because obviously there are going to be people that try to copy this. And they spent, I mean, everything about this turbo is pretty revolutionary. The only part that they reused was the exhaust flange for the downpipe. And they said they just didn't see a whole lot of gains from modifying or going to a different route. This piece right here is the only thing they reused. Everything else is new. Now, what I will say is the sound from this, it's not as ear piercing as some of you would like. If you're going for a 6.0 sound, the stage one is probably not gonna be what you're looking for. It's pretty mild. I think it sounds really good, especially under a load. I have ran into a little bit of an issue of almost a low RPM whistling, which some of you, probably 80% of you would like. Um, and then you, once you get into it, you hear the normal turbo goodness kick in. It's a pretty mild sounding turbo. It's not ear piercing. It's not a 38R with a cast wheel on it, which personally I really like. I think it's the, the low RPM whistle, not my thing, but for a lot of you, you probably like it. Um, Moving on to the final question, how did I end up with a test mule? Why am I a test mule for this? Well, it actually came down to Casey's really good customer service. I purchased another Casey product from a completely different vendor. Um, it looked like maybe it had been returned previously or had gotten damaged in shipping. Something had happened with it. Now, I'm not going to mention that vendor because I've had good luck with them in the past, never had an issue. I'm not here to trash talk people, but something had happened with that product. It had um, some contamination in it. It had some welding splatter on it. S something had happened, not something from KC, because even the box when I got it was messed up. The typical packing you find from KC wasn't there. Th there was a story behind that product. Well, I'd contacted KC just to see if it was something that happened at the factory and they reassured me, no, that's not how we do business. We're gonna make it right. So while I was in discussion with them, they said, hey, we'll buy back that product. Even though I did not buy it directly from them, it was from one of their vendors. They stood behind it, they said, hey, we'll buy that back. But we also have something else we'd like you to try that may work better for you in your application. And at first I was really hesitant. I was like, I don't know. They answered all my questions. The customer support was good. And they reassured me that this is not how we do business. We're gonna make this right. And they did. So I did purchase this with my own money. I did get a little bit of discount on it because of the issues we had with the other product. But I still paid, I'll tell you, it was over a thousand dollars for it. But they stood behind their old product and then they really worked with me on this. They answered a ton of questions. They were super knowledgeable. Alex over there was really good at returning my calls, sending me emails, James. I mean, everybody that we talked to was very knowledgeable and very supportive. With that being said, that is what's drawn me to KC is the customer support and the fact that they are willing to stand behind their products. And even when I didn't buy it directly from them, they did what they needed to to make it right. And that's something that's very rare and has earned my respect and the reason that I will continue using KC products, not just for my own personal use, but for my customers as well. And I really do give them credit for how much R&D and design that they have put into this turbo. And you'll see we've had it apart a couple times. And so far, I've been really happy with it. The um, only real complaint I had was the silicone tube that I originally got for it. Uh, for the intake because it's a four inch intake was kind of garbage that was actually sent out by mistake they have a new rib design that looks very similar to the stock tube but it's in a four inch configuration 
that fits like a glove. It fit this turbo really well. It also fits the 38R much better than the silicone tube that comes with that. So that is, uh, in itself is, shows the quality and how much time they're putting into this just to get that fitment right. Because those silicone tube designs, if you've ever dealt with one, whether it's been on a 38R or another product, they can be really finicky as far as fitment. A lot of times they don't fit right. I'm glad to see that KC is doing away with them, and I'm sure they spent a fortune on those new rib design because it's it's pretty cool, and I love how stockish it looks. But that's really my only complaint. Um, it's it's been a really good turbo, and I look forward to getting it back on the truck and continuing to do some testing. We are going to take this one back apart for the third time now, just to make sure everything still is good on it. But I'm sure it does. It still spins really well. It's nice and tight. And we're also going to uh, boost lead test this probably at about 35 PSI and just to make sure it's sealed up really good and tight. But so far, it's doing well. We did have um, one small issue with some of the bolts here because these go through the cover. I think they had a bad batch of silicone or a bad batch of sealer that they used. And it was causing a little bit of a leak around some of these bolts. What I've been told is they were spending the entire week retesting and making sure that that is 100% right. Yeah, once again, going back to that R&D aspect where they're actually taking the time, they're listening to the testers and saying, hey, how can we make this better? That's what I'm talking about. And it's gonna be, once they get these things right, this will be the new standard for 7.3 turbocharger drop-ins, I guarantee it. And I'm really curious about how these are gonna perform against some of the other non-drop-in units so it'll be really exciting to see how they compare to the t4s and honestly i think these are going to be better but don't take my word for it i hope to see a lot more reviews i hope this answered some of your questions it's turned into a very long video remember guys keep those guys in north carolina and tennessee in your hearts and minds prayers as always if you can help them in any way that you see fit please do so otherwise stay safe like share and subscribe as always, all the way.